Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is uh, Solomon Jagwe. I'm back with another quick tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own, uh, cast, not create your own, but taking the an image that you may have downloaded from the web, uh, which is uh, like 360 degree, like a, it's not exactly a H, an HDRI image, but taking it so that you can use it as an HDRI and actually convert it to a 32-bit image and get lighting similar to what you see here. So what I'm looking at is in uh, Octane and if we rotate you can actually see how the image in the background is contributing to the lighting of the scene and you can see the nice reflections in there. Now the challenge is that uh, normally when you download an image from the web uh, or if you if it's not an HDRI image, you're not gonna get correct lighting because by nature, if you if it's not uh, shot and prepared as an HDRI image, it's gonna be lacking the information that you need to light the scene with that uh, extra data that's inside of an HDRI image. But there's a way to trick uh, the program. In this case, uh, 3ds Max, Maya. It could even be Cinema 4D, as well as uh, the Unreal Engine. So what you see. You can see the lighting coming in from the right hand side and casting light onto the glass pane of this Cooper. And also when I rotate around, you can see it affecting these areas of the car, right? So this never started off as an HDR image, right? And I'll show you why. So when we go to my folder, this is an HDR image, yeah? But in this same folder, I have uh, that is uh, 83 and as you can tell I've been doing this for a, long, <laughs> a number of images so you can build your own library that you can repurpose and I'll show you how to get some of these images so 83 let's see if I can find it real quick all right so I have 83 here as an HDRI, HDRI image and just as a typical standard image that was downloaded from the the web now this image is 3000 pixels by 1500 RGB so if I open it, watch what happens to the scene. It becomes washed out because it's lacking that, uh, that extra lighting information that an HDRI image usually gives you. And if I rotate the scene, uh, you can see it's kind of washed out. The lighting isn't exactly accurate. Yeah. But if, if I switch it back to the one that I converted, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go real quick to 83. HDRI and this one if I open it you see but you get this HDRI load settings so that's when you know you've actually managed to get more light rather some more information from the image that then you're going to provide it to uh, Octane or any other GPU rendering engine so say okay and watch what happens now look at that major improvement yeah and so that even gives you more control over the lighting adjusting like for example if i select that light uh sorry the texture and i increase the, decrease the power you can actually see it decreasing the power like as if it was you are turning on the lights from the outside the sun going up and down right so that's the value of converting your image to, from just a typical jpeg to an hdri image and the way you do that is so First, you have to go to Flickr, for example, Flickr, and then search for equirectangular image, equirectangular image. It's a long word, but just type that in here, right? And add or at the end, the type of setting that you're looking for. So in this case, I looked for the outdoors. And if I uh, like just uh, scroll up and down, you can see there are different kinds, yeah? So there's one that I picked up. So here's a key. When you're looking for the right image to use for, from Flickr, right? These are not going to be HDR images, but if you click on it, now for example, this one, it gives you a preview of what that 360 degree image looks like. And that's at the bottom. If someone did a good job, I mean, you can see where they may have removed the tripod, but in this case, it struggles a little bit. So as you're setting up your 3D scene for compositing, just pay attention to details like that. So I'll go back to another one. So this one was nicely done. It's like a telltale sign where the tripod was, but they did a much better job. So as you're searching for such images, 
just pay attention to those details and also pay attention to when you click down here that the image is large enough for that for the 3d program to you interpret and another thing that you have to pay attention to please 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 whatever you do make sure you select in the category over here let's go back to the search narrow it down to under the co the license or model uh, make sure you choose something that has commercial use or modes allowed or no known copyright restrictions are, uh, are known that uh, no one is rest restricting you to use this so if you plan to use it in a, a commercial project make sure you pay attention to this so narrow down the field if you just select any license you may find some that are like the copyright they have copyrights on them so you can't really use them so make sure you choose commercial use and modes allowed and no known copyright restrictions right and then just go through and pick the ones that you like yeah and i'll show you another one uh, so this image is 4000 i want to see if i found one that is a little bit bigger so this is 10000 240 pixels so that's the kind of image that you want yeah so i've downloaded this image and as you can see it says some rights reserved and that's because it allows you to modify but you have to give credit to the person who shot this particular photo right and the good thing is when you get a, a photo that is done by someone who, who's a pro it will show you information about the camera and the lens that was used so that you can actually match it to the environment so we'll take this image into photoshop and I have it already loaded here. And if we zoom in to about 100%, that's 33%, 50%, 66 percent that's 100%. That's a very, very good image to start with, yeah? So we're gonna convert this and we're gonna test it in the scene that we have in 3ds Max. And you can do this for Maya Cinema 4D Blender as well. So the way you change this is simply go to image up at the top, go to mod right and then right now it's an 8-bit image right and then change it to 32 bits channel that's the only thing that you need to do and then export go to file save as save to your computer and we're going to put in the same place as this so up at the bottom here it's important to save as because if you don't save as then you won't get these extra options yeah so for example if i went back and changed it back to uh, 8 bits sorry not 16 we need to change it to back to 8 bit okay let's see okay so it's converting it to an HDRI image and that's that's, the, that's a sign when you know that it's actually doing a, a job of converting the standard JPEG into an HDRI image. So I'll let it run so you get a sense of how long it takes. And when it's done, so if we go back to image mod, it's 16 bit. So if, if it goes back to 8 bit, right, and you try to save this as a JPEG, I guess I should turn that off you're not going to get the same option so you don't see the hdr option here because it's not a 32-bit image but if we go back and say image mod we select 32-bit channel yeah and now it has converted to an hdr image if we go to file uh, save as don't show again save now it shows up again so now we can select that and we'll call this uh, from flick underscore zero dot hdri so make sure you actually name it dot hdri just like the other ones okay and then save so now we have a copy of this image and that was pretty easy it wasn't like difficult you know you had to paint or whatever no but what's amazing is what uh once it's converted to 32 bit then there's like it try the computer tries to pick up some information from there even though it's not truly hdri but you can see the difference as when you load it in in a 3d program so we go back to uh, 3ds max here you know right now we have this environment but we're going to switch it out with the other one that we made so i select the 
texture here. Instead of 83, let's load the one we've just saved. And we will say we'll try both of them so you can see the difference. All right, so there's the standard one. We'll open that. Just that's just a standard JPEG, a very large uh, resolution. Let's see if is it working. I hope it doesn't crash on me. <laughs> and also because it's a, a, a very large image, I just make sure you if you have low uh, RAM, it might be it might take a little bit longer. But if you have plenty of RAM, it will go pretty fast, as you can tell here. So as you can see, this is just a standard image. And it looks truly washed out, even though it's high resolution. Yeah, it still looks like as it is even like as if it's smoke. And it was a fire after all, but this is not what we're looking for. We're trying to find something that is truer to life in terms of the lighting. So what we do is we switch out the one that we converted into a 32-bit image. So we'll find that uh, I think it was from Flickr. Let me see if I can narrow it down from where is it from flick there it is okay from flick and now this is when you're going to know that you converted it to an hdri image it was gonna it's gonna pop up that prompt for the settings and it's pretty big so just give it a minute or two depending on uh, the you know the power of your machine this is 10,000 pixels wide, so it's fairly large. It might take a little bit more than a minute, but let's see how long. Okay, so it's done, and let's click open, and there it is. So you can see information has been picked up from it. And when you press OK, and watch what happens to the scene. We give it a minute. It's calculating, calculating. Let's see, wait for it, I pray it doesn't crash. Because <laughs> this is what I wanted to show for you. <laughs> Please don't crash. Okay, and just like we were when we were trying to bring it in, remember how long it took? So this is, a, it's trying to process it. It's 10,000 pixels wide, so that's a, a really large image, but that's what you need if you want to do like a high-res compositing or composition of this with a, maybe a 3D scene. And once it loads, you're going to see the difference in terms of the lighting. All right, so the image finally loaded and you can see the difference, right? So it doesn't look as washed out as it was before. And you can see the nice reflections that uh, I, picked up, I picked up from the the newly converted to HDRI image. So again, the quick uh, path to all this was we took this image, downloaded, downloaded it from uh, Flickr over here, and we made sure that uh, we had the rights to use it, and then downloaded the high resolution version, original, and also on the home page when you're doing the search, you can narrow it down to uh, commercial, mode uh, commercial use and modes allowed and also the environment the type of environment that you want okay and once we, we got to 3ds max or rather to photoshop we're able to save this uh, you, you went to image mode change it to from 68 bit to 32 bit and then we went to file save as and saved it as an hdri image HDR so you may not even need to do the extension automatically add it to it so and as you can tell I've done this multiple times so I know it works but I hope it helps you as well because sometimes you may not find you know, sometimes you get like free uh, like HDR images might not have exactly what you look for but Flickr might offer you a better option of like different images on uh, the web and this is extremely extremely detailed so that's what you want to use in uh, in 3D so take a look at that that's, that looks beautiful and that's because of that HDR image and so I hope this helps guys and uh, make sure you give it a try and let me know what you what your results look like and if you find it useful, please uh, leave a comment, like the video, and please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so my, you may be alerted when I post a new video.
but that's what I wanted to share with you. It's a quick way for you to take an um, image that you've downloaded from Flickr, convert it to an HDRI image and create an impressive, impressive image with nice lighting from the environment. And as you can see here, I'm doing it. I'm, this is what I was able to convert and it looks great inside of uh, Octane. Thank you so much and uh, see you next time. Also, oh, one something real quick. So here, as you can tell, I'm using Octane 2020. I can do some more editing here just as a, a look dev. I can adjust the exposure real quick. You know, adjust the gamma and bring the exposure back up again to give you that nice pop. And that gives you a really, really nice look of <laughs> the, what the HDRI looks like. And you can do this in Photoshop after you save this image, but you can get a nice result even without going to Photoshop. So I hope that helps. See you next time, guys. Thank you so much.